Hi guys, you're watching Railways Explained. Today we start a new series of videos on our channel. The idea is to talk about different railway systems of different countries around the world. This means we will present main characteristics of certain railway systems, which will include some history, some discussion about the market and network structure in that country, dominant rail companies present on the market, main types of goods that are being transported, main corridors, traffic performance and safety indicators, and many other cool and for all rail lovers interesting stuff. If you find this concept interesting, please tell us in the comments below, but also tell us which country would you like to see next. And don't forget to claim the reasons for your proposal. Anyway, the first country on our list is Switzerland. If you're wondering why Switzerland, reasons are many. But let's mention only a few hints. Switzerland is among the top rail systems in Europe in terms of intensity of traffic, but also network usage, service quality, punctuality and passenger rail culture in general. In addition, it maintains strong safety scores all the time, highest technical standards and its railway network is 100% electrified. Simply put, Switzerland's railways are among the best examples of how modern rail systems should look and also how it should be used by modern society. If we got your attention, let's proceed with the video. Switzerland's railway system, like many others in Europe, went through three characteristic stages of development. From the period of initial construction by private investors, through the period of nationalization, all the way to the period of reform and modernization. In a certain way, we already covered this topic in a video dedicated to the development of European railways. If you didn't, check that one out. Now, back to Switzerland. Just like in case of Europe and the rest of the world, the railway mania in Switzerland began in the 19th century. Private investors were the ones who started construction of many different railway lines, but this will later prove to be problematic. Again, just like in case of other countries, overconstruction took place, resulting in oversized and incompatible network. This later led to the bankruptcy of many investors, which finally motivated the Swiss government to nationalize private railway companies. However, Switzerland would not be Switzerland if this decision wasn't the subject of a referendum held in 1898. Referendum took place on 20th February, and on that occasion voters approved the Federal Act on Acquisition and Operation of Railways on behalf of the Confederation and on the administrative structure of the Swiss Federal Railways. Debate which took place before the vote was also very interesting. Under the slogan Swiss Railways for the Swiss People, supporters pointed out the advantages of standardization, which certainly might take place if railways come under the national control. Anyway, the process of nationalization was carried out and completed on January 1st, 1902. So, this date can be considered the official birthday of the Swiss Federal Railways, or shortly as BB. In the following period, again, just like in case of the rest of the Europe, railways were doing fine. Network was being developed, technology improved, lots of freight and passengers ended up on trains, numbers went up. Then something happened. In a few words, road network improved, people started using cars, businesses started using trucks, the economy shifted from goods suitable for trains to goods suitable for trucks, and all was followed by stagnation of rail technology and accumulation of debts. Railways were in crisis. If you watch Railways Explained on a regular basis, you're already familiar with all these details. When speaking of the rail reform in Switzerland, it was kind of different compared to the rest of Europe, and that's why we are going to analyze it in a bit more detail. The reason is the fact that the reform initiated in 1991 by European Economic Community, the forerunner of the European Union, was implemented in Switzerland, which wasn't a member state of the EU. However, in order to simplify, let's introduce three main characteristic reform phases. The first phase of the reform of Swiss railways began with a change in the rules governing the transport of passengers on the regional level. The new law on railways, which entered into force on 1st January 1996, among other, significantly transformed relations between railway companies and public administration. The ordering principle has been introduced, requiring public authorities to subsidize only the services agreed in advance and clearly indicated in the contract. Another change relates to the powers delegated to the cantonal authorities. 
In the past, only the Confederation set out the basic conditions for regional transport together with SBB, and Confederation also covered all the costs alone. The idea was now different, to make cantons fully responsible for the regional services on their territories. The third and most important novelty is related to the intention to end the SBB monopoly for the regional passenger transport. This was undoubtedly the most innovative solution, which was supposed to open up the way for competition. The second phase of the reform is represented by introduction of a new regulatory framework. The aim was to transpose the principles set out in EU legislation in the first line directive 91440. This resulted in separation of the rail activities related to transport from rail activities related to the infrastructure management. It also enabled the access to the Swiss railway network for all interested authorized railway companies. It also significantly changed the organization and business model of SBB. One of the main goals of this part of the railway reform was in fact to abolish the power of federal administration over the SBB. Furthermore, during 2005, the Swiss government proposed a new package of laws branded as Railway Reform II. The main goal was to complete the transposition of the first and transpose the second package of the EU railway laws. However, the Swiss parliament returned this package to the government with a request not to implement it all at once, but rather through several smaller packages. But that's not that important. What is important is that the principle of competition has been formally accepted for both international freight and passenger rail traffic. But in the case of domestic traffic, the Swiss model actually differs from the standards dictated by the European Commission. The Swiss model has its own specificities and is more akin to a particular type of governance than to a true change in the market structure. The Swiss rail system is vertically integrated, like in case of, for example, Japan. Precisely this fact that Switzerland has a single rail system is often seen as an essential reason behind its exceptional performance. The Swiss railway system is in that sense a hybrid system, somewhere between liberalized market, partly in line with the EU law and philosophy, and, on the other hand, stiff national and monopolistic railway system. However, indisputably, in the case of Switzerland, this EU philosophy and the management model gave incredible results in terms of traffic performance, which will be discussed in more detail in the next chapter. The liberalization of the rail market in Switzerland enabled specific form of on-rail competition and emergence of large number of private companies involved primarily in the transport of goods. According to the latest report of the Independent Regulators Group Dash Rail, there are in total 59 companies on the Switzerland's railway market. Of course, we'll not gonna talk about all 59, but we'll mention only the few most significant. We'll start from the largest, SBB Group. SBB Group is organized according to the parent company structure. SBB manages four operating divisions, as well as the freight section. These are passenger services markets, passenger services production, real estate, and the infrastructure division. The former cargo division became an independent group company at the start of 2019, and emerged as freight section with controlled subsidiaries SBB Cargo and SBB Cargo International. SBB Cargo operates mostly in Switzerland, and SBB Cargo International owns two companies, SBB Cargo Germany as a German production company, and SBB Cargo Italy as its Italian production company. SBB's governing bodies are responsible for the overall management and supervision, in particular for the strategic and financial management. However, they respect the legal independence of the group companies and all applicable legal, statutory or regulatory provisions. The Sudostbahn or SOB is a small railway company jointly owned by the cantonal and federal governments. This company operates on 147 kilometers of railway lines, out of which 129 kilometers are in their ownership. The Four Alpen Express service operated by SOB runs every hour as an interregio express train from Lucerne to Saint Gallen. The French-Swiss joint venture TGV Lyria, founded in May 1993, operates high-speed trains between Paris and South France with services to Geneva, Lausanne, Basel and Zurich in Switzerland. It is 74% in the ownership of the French National Railways and 26% in the ownership of SBB. 
The German National Railway Company, Deutsche Bahn, owns cross-border lines from the German border to Basel Badischer Bahnhof Station, which is also operated by DB. It also owns and operates an east-west line across the canton of Schaffhausen that forms a link in the largely German High Rhine Railway, and jointly owns Schaffhausen Railway Station with SBB. DB also operates long-distance trains from Germany to some Swiss cities, including IC services to Basel, Zurich, Bern, Chur and Interlaken. On the other hand, Swiss operators run several services to Germany, for example regular Eurocity service to Stuttgart. The Austrian rail jet by OBB is also in the game, operating the service between Zurich and several destinations in Austria. These services run via Buchs and Gallen and enable connections with the cities of Innsbruck, Salzburg and Vienna, among others. If you agree, now is the right time to bring in some numbers. For the purpose of this section, as a source of the figures, we use statistical data reports from SBB website. With that being said, the length of the railway lines managed by SBB is 3260 km, out of which 1893 km stand for the multi-track lines. The longest tunnel in Switzerland is the Gotthard Base Tunnel, with a length of 57.1 km. This tunnel is at the same time the world's longest railway and deepest traffic tunnel. We mentioned this tunnel in our first video where we talked about the Guinness World Records related to railways. The degree of electrification of railway lines in Switzerland is amazing 100%, which is unique in the world. In addition, Switzerland possesses the densest railway network in the world, where the line length per country area of 100 squared kilometers is 120.75 kilometers, as you can see on the screen. Besides that, the SBB railway network is 100% covered with the European train control system, which enables a high level of safety and reliability of the service. In terms of employees, in 2020 the SBB group had a total of 33,498 workers. This may seem as a large number, but keep in mind that the largest number of employees are engaged in passenger transport, a total of 14,680, and the passenger transport in Switzerland is intense. We'll talk about that in a moment. However, this number is followed by 9,978 people involved in the management and maintenance of railway infrastructure, as well as the traffic regulation, while a total of 3,225 deal with freight transport services. The rest of employees work in real estate and group-level units. Let's now talk about the SBB transportation performance. Here we will present the data for 2019, having in mind that the COVID pandemic in 2020, like everywhere else, left a significant mark on rail transport. So, the number of trains on the Swiss railway network per day in 2019 was 11,294. Yes, you heard right, over 11,000 trains per day in a country whose railway network is only 3,260 kilometers long. Within this number, 9,522 trains are passenger services, while 1,772 stands for freight operations. The number of passengers per day is 1.32 million, which means that SBB transports about 488 million passengers a year. Just to remind you, Switzerland has a population of about 8.5 million people. Also, SBB has one great animation on its website relating to the rail passenger services that we can't say anything about except for this is really fascinating. The busiest station in Switzerland is Zurich with over 400,000 passengers a day. Next one is Bern with over 200,000. What is also interesting in the story of the Swiss railways is the punctuality of the passenger trains. In Switzerland, a train service is considered on time if the train arrives at any station on its route with less than 3 minutes delay. Do you know what is the percentage of on-time services in Switzerland? Over 91%. Regarding the freight performance, 200,000 tons per day is being transported by SBB Cargo and SBB Cargo International on the Swiss railway network. Other private companies also transport significant amounts of goods, but we did not manage to find any reliable data on the amounts. However, if some of you already know, please let us know in the comments. We plan to talk about the rolling stock as well, however we had to give up on that idea, having in mind that the video would in that case last too long.
Instead, we encourage you to take a look on this beautiful list available on SBB website. Link will be in the description. Also, let's now mention one interesting news item that we came across recently. Namely, in April this year, SBB ordered six double-decker trains from Stadler, worth about 1.18 billion euros, aiming to expand its train capacity and offer more regional services, starting from 2024. And now, one more interesting part – finances. As you can see on the screen, in the last 10 years, SBB has had a positive consolidated result where operating income was higher than operating expenses. But unfortunately, the COVID pandemic caused a change in this trend. As you can see, all the types of revenues declined in 2020 and all expenditures increased, which led to SBB losing 617 million Swiss francs. We really hope things will improve in the next period for the SBB and that SBB, as well as other European and World Railways, will be back on the tracks in terms of finances. In any case, we hope we gave you enough information to understand the Swiss railway system. Indeed, it can really be a good benchmark for all other railways in the world. This was all for today, we hope you enjoyed and learned something new about the railways of the world. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your real loving friends, and of course, subscribe to our channel. Until the next time, goodbye.